Welcome to Power Driven Diesel. In this episode, we're going to be testing the Borg Warner SXE 364.5. Uh, like all Borg Warner SXE turbos, this has the 360 thrust bearing, uh, the billet compressor wheel, larger compressor housing than the older style S300s, and so they're a nice improvement. Uh, on this one, we have uh, the .91 T4 divided housing. This is a non-wastegated housing. Uh, we've tested it so far on a .70, so now we're going to jump up a lot to a .91 and see what happens. Uh, we're going to run the same test we've been running. We're going to run the first test. It's going to be from... 1300 to 3200 RPM with just the weight of the dyno at about 3500 pounds. Uh, then we're going to test it loaded at about 5000 pounds uh, from 1800 to 2800 RPM to see what kind of response time it has while you're cruising down the road. Um, so the first test we're going to do right now is going to be that, like I said, that unloaded run from 1300 RPM up to 3200 RPM. And uh, here we go. the graph and see how it did. Definitely felt laggy compared to a 0.70, but uh, let's see what we did for power-wise here. So peak power was coming in, let's pull up on the graph here, 570. It's about the same power it made before with the 0.70 houses. We didn't pick up any power, which is kind of interesting. And um, peak torque, 1204. It felt def definitely laggy compared to the .70. Um, we didn't pick up much power, at least not on our altitude. Uh, for this, I'm still liking the 70 housing, this turbo, on this size of engine. Um, let's overlay. Do we have that 64 graph, the 62? If we overlay just the, the same test, take a look. The 64 with, with the 70 housing. Let's just kind of look at the power difference. This is on different days. It's a different day, same dyno, different day, same everything. Just let's just take a look. So, the 70 obviously is way quicker to spool, made more torque, which is understandable because of the earlier spool. Um, they really fell about the same, really. I mean, gal, on this so far, I'd say there's not much of a reason to do a 91 divided housing on this turbo on a 5.9 truck, anyway. Uh, let's see what it does. Response time now. Let's go over there and do our 5,000 pound load. We're going to go from about 1,800 RPM to uh, 2,800 RPM, and we're going to see how it does uh, time wise. Here we go.
All right, let's go see how that did on a roll on. As far as how many seconds it took from throttle to peak torque. Power's about what? About the same? A little less. Well, that's probably just heat. A little less power, but it's heat soaked, so that's not surprising. Just a couple. Um, peak torque, 1230. So how long from zero seconds to about five and a half seconds? So if you're at 1800 RPM in this truck and you mat it, it's going to take about five and a half seconds to get peak torque. It's a long time. So, and well, you know, and that's at altitude. It's different wherever you live. If you're at sea level, it'll be quicker. Uh, but we're testing this here at 5,700 feet on a hot summer day. So let's overlay this with the 62 with the 0.91 and just compare the 62 versus 64. My gosh, there's no hardly any. Well, the power is the same pretty much. The 64, a little bit more, carries a little further. But again, it's, it's all that turbine wheel. Very interesting. Either way, personal opinion, 0.91 sucks for both the 62 and the 64. Wouldn't recommend it unless you got some kind of big crazy plans. You're doing compounds. You're going to do some external wastegating. Makes a little more sense then. But it's running as a single charger. Uh, not a huge fan of the 0.91 with these turbos. So anyway, give us, if you have any questions about the 364 or any turbos, uh, call us here at Power Driven Diesel, 435-962-9555, uh, or visit PowerDrivenDiesel.com. Thanks.